Two seconds of your yes. time, man. What do you want? Young entrepreneurs. Yes. Just lack patience and actually give a fuck about what other people think of them. Those are the two core reasons you're not at the next level yet. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Our hands full. We own uh, some rentals as well. We own a fourplex, the wife and I. Nice. And dealing with tenants is, is a full-time gig, as you, <laughs> as you know. Yep. I came from Port Angeles, Washington, born and raised right across the water from Canada, eh? Um, and then played one year at Community College Baseball, Lower Columbia Community College, okay. no Red Devils. Got drafted by the Texas Rangers. Ooh. Played three years of professional baseball, which was a blast. Actually got drafted by Nolan Ryan, the man No way, himself. really? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I was fortunate to know some, some big time what guys. Was, what was Major League Ball like? So it uh, it's an evil man. It okay. is it is living out of the suitcase for eight months, and <laughs> for me, some guys were able to do it. I could not juggle like a relationship while playing professional baseball because I was the guy that would get there at nine a.m. Mm-hmm. and I was leaving at eleven p.m. One, it would not have been fair to any woman yeah. dumb enough to date me. <laughs> but two, just head wise, I am a uh, when I put my focus into something, it is full tilt focused. Yeah. And so I, I just, I knew that I would have plenty of time. I wasn't that good. So I knew that I would have plenty of time when I got released to have a relationship and start family and whatnot. And I'm so fortunate and I'm happier now than when I was playing, mm-hmm. which people sort of have a hard time believing. Yeah. Cause I, I feel it's, like it's, to some, it's like a true passion. It is. And like when they have to put yep. the baseball down, it's like, okay, life is kind of over. It was hard. It was a, uh, when I finally got told it wasn't good enough, <laughs> which nobody likes to hear, but no. it, and it happened so young in professional sports. Yeah. But um, when it finally happened, I, it was like a, whoa, like now what do I do? Because yeah, I, I mean, I've played baseball since I could walk. Yeah. So there I am. I'm sitting in Surprise, Arizona, which is where spring training is for the Rangers, okay. and I'm literally sitting there. So it's like preseason. Yep. Yeah, spring training release. They brought in like yeah, something like a hundred pitchers that off season, and it was <laughs> just, I mean, and I, I pitched really, really well. Yeah. I was really happy. All my stats. You guys can Google me. Ooh. Um, and it might be some old vines up or something. <laughs> um, so I don't claim any of those. I don't, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, maybe me juggling. But um, yeah, so I'm sitting in Surprise, Arizona, and hey, man, we, we got to let you go. And, and I totally understood. I understand the business side of baseball. Yeah. And once you play at that level, it's really hard to like be a fan yep. again. Yeah. And, and people are always like, oh, you must be a huge Ranger. Not really. Like I, I follow my guys that I know and that mm-hmm. I'm friends with. Do you stay connected with a lot of those guys? I do. Yeah. yeah. So Derek Holland, who was an all-star pitcher, he plays for the White Sox now. Um, him and I stay connected pretty well. Uh, Austin Bibbins Dirks, who is actually a Meridian local. I sold him a house. No way. Last really? year. Yeah, he's he's in the show with the Rangers now. Okay. And then I've got some some good buddies who are in minor league ball That's still. It's really cool are, to me. It is. It is. So, um, no, man, it, it was fun. It was, it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, what are some of the key things that you took away from baseball? I know that you were talking about it a minute ago. Is your work ethic? Yep. Was just crazy nuts. So, like yeah. nine a.m., eleven p.m. Like it didn't stop. What? Um, what are some of the things you took away from baseball? I always, I I believe it was Ken Griffey Jr. But don't quote me. Said, hey, there's always going to be somebody bigger, faster, stronger. They can jump higher than you. What? Whatever. But nobody should ever outwork you. And that has stuck with me through. Playing, coaching, private lessons, real estate, working on a ferry boat. I mean, everything that I've ever done, that quote has stuck with me. And I just always knew that if if I got released or if I was told I wasn't good enough, if I knew that I had given everything yeah. and broke myself down to such a just basic show up and do your job, that I would be fine and I could live with myself. And so when I got released, I, I really wasn't sad. Yeah. Like you a lot of guys when they got released just would like, come out and like were just balling, which I understand. And, and I was more like, "Hey, I'm really going to miss the camaraderie and the, the competition." But as far as like the the fame of the whole thing, like I, I don't miss that at all. Yeah. Um, Let me go sign a thousand autographs. Yeah, I mean it, it's cool and it's fun and it's mm-hmm. really fun for the first month, uh, and then it just becomes routine and. Yeah. And so I just knew that if I put in everything, everything I had, and got told no. Mm-hmm. 
I was fine. You were going to get to that point. I was so, fine. So after baseball, after getting released, what yep. was kind of your next step? What was your next move? So there I am. Let's I'm go through surprised. the low. Like yeah. we were talking about yeah, yeah, no, the other day. It was low, low. You potentially low, low. rose like a phoenix. Maybe like a phoenix. Ooh, like a phoenix. soaring eagle. Yeah. Out of the fog. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hate fog, dude. That's, that's a Port Angeles, <laughs> Washington. It's too wet. Um, no, so I'm, I'm sitting in Surprise, Arizona. I think I polished off a 12-pack of uh, of Angry Orchard. I think Angry Orchard was in then. <laughs> Is it still in? Do people drink it? No? I think so. I, I think so. I don't. I don't. I'm way too manly now. I drink Budweiser. <laughs> and Bud Light Lime. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so seriously, like... I, I pull this off a, a 12 or of Angry Orchard. I'm just sitting in Spreads, Arizona, and I'm like, well, what's the swearing policy on this podcast? Oh, we can just let it fly. We can? Yeah. I'm just afraid that, like, ESPN Radio is going to hear this and want me, and so I'm going to try oh, to keep it. I'm going to try yeah. to keep it to the radio, so That's what true. is it? Shit, ass, and damn, right? Yeah. You can say the radio? I think those. Okay. Drop if not, we'll blur it out. Yep. So I'm like, well, shit. You know, I don't have much money, yeah. and I need to make some. And I don't. I'm not. I'm good at like two things. One is hunting, and one is baseball. Yeah. Hunting, you spend money. You don't make it. <laughs> um, and baseball, they pretty much told me to kick rocks. So I trained at Northwest Nazarene in Nampa, Idaho. Shout out to the Crusaders. Woo-hoo. And uh, they were fortunate enough to offer me the pitching coach job as soon as I was released. So I drove. Oh really? Okay. I drove 24 hours. To put, silence your phone, man. That is so. Uh, yeah, I hope man. that shows up on this. <laughs> well, I okay. So I, <laughs> that's awesome. Mine's silence. This is my first go. Um, so I drive 24 hours from Surprise, Arizona to Port Angeles, Washington. As soon as I get to Port Angeles, Washington, I have just a. I, I don't know if I was just so tired, but almost like a just a a strong feeling, if you will, a come to Jesus moment. Um, but I, I said to myself, if I stay here. Tonight, I'm never leaving Port Angeles. And Port Angeles is a small town. It's one of those towns that, honest to God, sucks people in. And it's like, man, I always wanted to leave. I just never did. Yeah. And so, seriously, I I threw all my baseball stuff in the house. I grabbed whatever bag I needed to grab um, and looked at my parents. And I was like, hey, I'm going back to Idaho. And they're like, you just drove 24 hours. You've been home 20 minutes. And I'm like, yep, if I don't leave now, I'm never going to. And I got in the car. I drove. It's a big moment. Eleven hours. Mm-hmm. Tido got pulled over coming into Nampa by a cop going eighty-five, and he, now the speed limit's eighty, so you would have gone away. No, 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 no. It's close to Nampa, uh, so it was sixty-five. Ooh. It was sixty-five then too. Um, and he's like, "Hey, man, what uh, what do you got going on?" And it was like the closest to like a breakdown that I had. And I was like, <laughs> "Dude, you have no idea. Yeah. Like, I just got released." I'm going, I'm coaching at NNU. <laughs> and the guy's like, all right, dude, have fun. And like, turned around. And he I was just like, was like he totally thank you. Bad for you huh? And I had like my whole life possession in my car. is Isuzu Rodeo, 1988 Isuzu Rodeo uh, that puttered. And uh, I don't even know how I was, I think I was going downhill, which is how I hit 85. Um, <laughs> got to NNU, started coaching. Liked it. Didn't like it as much as planned. Yeah. Uh, thought I was going to like it a lot more. It's tough when you base your success on 18 year old kids I realized okay. yeah and, and a lot of kids they like really talented just didn't put in the work ethic that I had grown so accustomed to I mean yeah, exactly you wanted to see them put in the work that you put in yeah and I just I mean if one thing is is noticed out of this podcast it's going to be that I'm a big work ethic guy yeah I, I can't stand laziness for all of you yes followers make sure you uh, write this one down work I, ethic Work ethic. I mean, if, and, and I think that that is, you know, we talk about the millennial generation and, and all the problems that we have and yeah. social media and can't focus and all that. I actually think there's a lot of things from that that can be good. I think not being able to focus on one thing can be turned into a positive. If you can yeah. focus on two or three things at a time, that's called multitasking. Yeah. Um, I think that social media, as you've shown, is so, so, so important. Producer, not a consumer. Exactly. And, but through all of that, you got to wake up hungry, mm-hmm. and you got to wake up wanting to go to work. So, there is nobody out there that can't get a job. I, I just can't stand it. Yeah, I can't I stand it. With you. I there is a job out there if you want a job. If you want to work, you want to make money. It's out there. If not, hey, there's a street corner for you to bang on. So was that too? Was no. that too straightforward? No, that's okay. totally. That's what we like to hear. 
Yeah. So working hard, people around me aren't necessarily the players just aren't yet so that was frustrating for me, but it was still good and it was a big time growing up moment. Um I actually ended up being the facilities and events coordinator at NNU. The oh, interim. So you kind of took that on so as I you were coaching. Took that on as I was coaching. I was scheduling basketball, volleyball, all kind, of, and that was fun. I was really young. Uh, I was like the youngest Division two pitching coach in the nation. Wow. I was going to Tennessee for some pitching coach uh, like talks and stuff, yeah. and, and it was a lot of fun. And then one day I just sort of woke up and I was like, man, like I'm making five thousand bucks a year, <laughs> which. Put that into perspective, $5,000 a year, okay? What is rent right now? Find, find me a place that you can rent <laughs> with $5,000 a year. It doesn't happen. No. So I'm renting a, room, no. renting a room for 300 bucks, right, a month. That's, what, $3,600 a year? <laughs> yeah, so $1,400. Um, stole a ton of food. zero is a lot. Stole a ton of food from the cafeteria. <laughs> Wasn't paying any taxes. Um, I was doing private lessons on the side and it was like, oh wow, this person tipped me a five spot? Like, we're gonna go get some R&R. &R. Yeah. <laughs> we're drinking some whiskey tonight. Yeah. So I do that. Um, and, and it was good, it was just a, it was a good growing up moment, but I was miserable. And I woke up one day and I yeah. was just like, this sucks. And I mean, I was talking about like, I wanna go work for a landscape company, work Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, chill, watch football, and yeah, drink beer. Yep. And I'm like, those guys make thirty thousand dollars. That's incredible. Yeah. And I'm like, God, those guys are living it. And at that point, you're, how old were you at that point? Like? Twenty-two, twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't have yep. like a. You just had like live by your means mm -hmm. and the perspective of yep. okay, whatever I make. Yep. I'm gonna live and thirty thousand dollars a year was like, whoo. Oh man, I, I, I thought if somebody 30, 30, 30. was making thirty, they were. High rollers. I remember telling a guy that I coached with, Jason Crohn. If Jason Crohn's listening. Uh, we'll Jason Crohn just had a kid, actually. So congratulations to Jason Crohn. Um, and he's since moved on from NNU. I remember being out at the Matador. Uh, and I don't know how, why we got to go there. I think we did a camp. And we each got paid like 400 bucks. And we were like, Party. whoa. And so we went to the Matador. And I just remember looking at him. And like we were just so sad, man. Like... Like even looking back on it, I'm just sad, <laughs> but I'm glad it happened. Yeah. And I looked at him. I'll never forget this either. We're sitting at the bar at the Matador. I look at him. I go, God, dude, I just want to be able to order an appetizer and not look at how much it costs. Yeah. And I go, I don't even want to eat it. I want to order it and not like it and just not. And eat just it. say, yeah, I don't want it. I go, where, where does that happen? And he's like, pipe dream, dude. <laughs> Because he was like in his thirties, put it in there, put it in there real deep. Yeah. Don't let it ever like, come back ha, up. Good one, man. Yeah. And I'm like, and he's like, you gotta get hit by a car or something like that. And I'm like, all right. And so, um, yeah, I just kept chugging along. One day, woke up, pissed off, angry. We just won a championship too, and that, that's how I knew. I was like, if I just won a championship, and I'm not excited to go in. Yeah. Go in. I'm meeting with the head guy, Rocky Musgraves, and. Uh, He's like, okay, here are the things you need to do this summer. Da, da, da. And I just started shaking my head. I go, dude, I'm not coming back. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm resigning. I'm sorry. I'm miserable. You just hung him up. And he's like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I got no idea. No idea. And because I'd always... <laughs> so for all of you out there that don't like your job, and you hear people say, if you don't like what you do, quit, quit doing it. Do that, but make sure you've got something else lined up. <laughs> so at least gotta, somewhat lined up. Keep making money and then try to figure out what you're gonna do. So yeah. I'm coaching as many lessons as I can. I'm doing like eight lessons a day, which was pretty profitable, but I was still miserable, breaking my back, getting hit in the shins with people that don't know how to pitch. I mean just knees got bad real quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, my knees are shot. Um, that's why I don't jog. <laughs> Yogi. No, it's because you're no, like six seven. No yogi, six eight, dude. Okay, sorry. Do your homework. <laughs> Should have googled you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I'm I'm driving out past. Again, I don't forget important things, like my wife's birthday, Allie. Um, I'm driving past Farmway, Farmway Road in Caldwell. I see a house, and I go, "That's a pretty cool house," and it sounds Mainridge. And so I call the name on the sign. No answer. Leave a message. Don't know yeah. why I left a message. I normally don't. Mm -hmm. And next morning, like 7 a.m., this realtor calls me back. And first of all, I'm like, what are you doing calling me yeah, at 7 a.m.? <laughs> hey, you know, heard that you were excited about Farmway. Like, we want to go see it. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So, meanwhile... What did the bank account look like at this point? Um, it didn't have a bank account at that point. I was rolling, <laughs> rolling cash. cash. <laughs> uh, it was just easier, cleaner. Yeah, yeah. When you're making, you know, 40 bucks a day, <laughs> that's pretty high rolling money. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we go out and look at it, and we look at a couple... And he's like, so have you been like pre-approved? Yeah. And I'm like, no. Nah, you're like, what does that mean? What do you need to do? <laughs> uh, we'll have you talk to someone. So I started talking to a lender and they're like, you got zero credit. Zero. I didn't have bad credit because I never had credit. Didn't have a credit card. Didn't have 22, a car loan. 22, 23. No car loan. I paid everything cash. Yeah. And, yeah. and my parents were big like Dave Ramsey folks. Okay. Which I think can be positive. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's negative. Um, I was I just always grew up afraid of like debt and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, which is a, is a good thing. Yes, it is. I'm glad because it, it keeps us balanced. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I didn't have any debt, none at all. Didn't have any student loans. I did that one year, and then the Rangers actually were paying for my education. Oh, so okay. I was doing online school this whole time. The Rangers were paying for it, part of my contract that I drew up, which oh, was nice. a good smart. As soon as I was done, I had X amount of years to get my degree. So I'm doing that. Got no money and uh, yeah, no car loan, nothing, zero credit, a zero. And the loan officer's like, "You got zero credit?" And I go, "Yeah, I know." Yep, kind pretty, of excited, pretty impressive. Like, yeah, That's you're uh... good. And she's like, "A five fifty would be better than a zero. <laughs> and I'm like, "But that's considered bad credit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad credit is better than no credit. And I went, "Well, shit." And so, um, through the whole process, though, the, the realtor that I was working with, we're, we were talking, and he was like, dude, you're, you know, <laughs> you're an awesome. Guy. Um, yeah, and he's like, you'd be great at this. And I was like, does it make good money? Yeah. And he, like, him and his wife, like, laugh. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> and come to find out, like, this guy's, like, number 100 right now in the Valley. Like, oh, really? real estate. So, like, you know, a couple cabins up in McCall, mm-hmm. good. Produces well. Yeah. So, when they laughed, I get it now. And I go, yeah, man, I just want enough for, like, be able to pay my rent. And, like, I'd love to buy a truck. Yeah. And he goes, dude, you're going to be able to buy a truck in your first month. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah come okay. On, I've heard that. Yeah. And so, yeah, went to real estate school. Um, graduated real estate school. I had $60 when I graduated real estate school. Okay. 60 bucks. Made it last a long time, too. Did a good job. And when I sold my first house, I had to ask that realtor who would help me out who I was living with now, by the way, because uh, I had no money. I had to ask him to fill up my gas tank. And it, like, I hate, 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 hate asking for help. And everybody has to at some point now. Yep. And I just remember walking into the kitchen and just being so ashamed. Here I am, thought I was cool at one point. Now I know I'm not. <laughs> and I'm like, hey man, uh, can I borrow like a 20 spot? I gotta get some gas. And like, no hesitation. Didn't even say, he was like, yep. Hands me a 20, and like we never talked about it again. So, and I, and I appreciate that to this day. I go out, show somebody like 10 houses, military couple, uh, support the troops, and they buy the house and it closed, you know, whatever day, how many days later. And I got the check, and again, 20 bucks in my bank account. I get the check, I like try to do a mobile deposit, <laughs> and it's like, that's too much money for a mobile deposit. And I'm like, the check amount was $6,200, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'm, That's good. I'll yeah. be honest with everybody listen. 6200 bucks. I had never seen $6,200 in my life. You saw it in one year. That yeah. You're making five grand. Yeah, and it was almost, long gone almost. by that. Yeah, exactly. He got that check and instantly gave it to somebody else at that point. I'm like, $6,200? What am I going to buy? This easy? And I'm like, yeah, this what, is great. What, do you, what starts running through your mind when oh, you're just yeah. like, are you like guns? Are you like, oh, yeah. I'm going hunting, uh-huh. I'm going to buy a truck. If you Google what you can buy for $6,200, it's really not that much. But in my mind, I was it's like. It's a lot of shit. Dude, I can buy like a couple thousand rounds of ammo. Yeah. Didn't need it. I'm not in the militia. But you could go I buy could. an appetizer. Oh, and yeah. And not even care about if you bought a Bought a real bottle of whiskey. Bought a bottle of Woodford Reserve whiskey, which is still the date. It's my favorite whiskey. Um, bourbon, for all you hecklers out there. Um. <laughs> And so, yeah, it went to the bank, and they're like, it's going to take four days. Or no, it's going to take two days for this yeah. to post. I was like, what? <laughs> and they're like, I need this they're now. They're like, well, do you need it? And I'm like, yeah, I freaking need it. And they're like, okay, well, 400 is going to be in your bank account right away. And I'm like, oh. And they're like, order pizza. I mean, just, but as soon as all the dust settled, and I looked at my bank account, and it was great, I got so hungry. And yeah. just that feeling of making serious, and that's not, I mean, it's not about the money. 
No. And you've carried that, and what I've learned about you is you carry that work ethic over into your real estate. And that's like rolled out on all of your clients is like one of the things that you will you will drop what you're doing and you're always there to help others. Yeah, I mean, whether it's real, no matter what your job is, it's not that hard to answer your phone. That's true. Sorry, it's just not. And you know what, if you have to pause a movie for 10 minutes at nine o'clock on a Tuesday night to console somebody who's gonna have a mental breakdown over their house not going through, well worth it. Well worth your it. wife, your husband, whoever is sitting there watching the movie with you, they'll forgive you. If you got to step out of the restaurant for 10 minutes to take a phone call because somebody just bought a new car when their house is pending and it screwed their credit Does up. Does that really happen? It does. It does. Hey. I, I, I don't know. It's because, like, of, because of bad realtors like me that don't warn people. I do now. I do now. Don't lie. <laughs> I did. Like when I, it just was so common sense to me. I, I show up in Emmett. You got a house pending in Emmett for the inspection. Show up and the plates are like, no plates on this car. Kendall and Ford or whatever. <laughs> And I get out of the car, truck at that point. And it starts running through your head already. You're like, oh. And it's just one of those, like, you know, like when you think you left the stove on. Yeah. (laughs) And you're like, did I leave the stove on? And then you go back in the house and you did. Yeah. It was that. And uh, I get out of the car and I'm like, hey, uh, dude, you just buy that car. Yeah. You want to see inside of it? (laughs) And I'm about lost it on the guy. I'm like, nope. But you're going to drive right back to the dealer and you're going to turn it in. I don't think you can do I go, do it. <laughs> and you can't do that. Um, and luckily, I mean, it was still fine, but that fear, I was like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. So anyway, um, I don't know, where, where are we going with that? <laughs> Other than just a good story. It was just a good story. Just a good story? Yeah. So you, uh, you closed your first deal. Yeah. And was it, you obviously witnessed that um, feeling of like appreciation and gratitude mm-hmm. of like when you first closed that and that's when you got hungry. Got really hungry and just so that everybody's clear, I had no freaking idea what I was doing. Yeah. Not at all. The whole saying, fake it till you make it, absolutely. If you're confident and you are just inept in being able to figure out basic common sense and basic problem solving, mm-hmm. And it's not even lying. It's it, when a client calls you and they're worried, and you go, "Oh, I totally understand. Hey, it's everything's going to be fine. I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out for you. I, I think I, I think I know a solution to it. I had no idea. Hang up. Oh my gosh! But then you call the people that you need to call to figure it out. Call yeah. your broker. Ask the, whoever mm-hmm. is your friend in the business. Call title. What? And so I just learned by trial and error. And honestly, when people were like, "How long have you been selling real estate?" And I'd be like, "Ah, oh, man." been a while how long Jeez, I don't even I don't even know anymore <laughs> oh cool and I'm like yep yeah and I'm like 11 days <laughs> and I'm like 11 days so just fresh off the boat so that first year in real estate how many deals did you just fly through did you uh, was it like one after the other did you have like a low point so I started in or? October okay started so October kind of bad first bad time of the year to really start did like four deals in that winter which was fine I'd still take that today <laughs> Uh, and then as soon as spring hit, man, it was like, you know, 10 closes Got in March amazing. and April. I think I ended up with 33, 33 or 34 homes sold in my first year of real estate. Wow. And I think they quote, they quote, I don't know if quotes are accurate, but they quote something like out of real estate school, the first year agent's going to sell like three to four homes in their first year. And so I was like, that's pretty good. 30, 34. Did you there. have a Did you have a goal? Yeah. After yeah. you sold that first home, yeah. or when you got out of real estate, yeah, my goal was twenty. To okay. be completely honest with you, after my first year, I was like, next October, I want to sell twenty homes. I, I thought that was obtainable. Got to twenty mid summer, mm-hmm. and I was like, all right, thirty it is. Yeah. So we got thirty, and then uh, yeah, just you know, now it's and now it's not so much. My goals have changed. My goals have changed so much. I don't necessarily want to sell more homes. I want to sell more expensive homes. Yeah. I don't I'd rather I'd take ten deals that net me more money. Yeah. Than thirty five. So you you deals. transitioned in one year to more of a volume kind of yeah. sales volume. I'd like to. I still deal with the you know lower end. Yeah, because which is fine. I, I still like it. I like putting people into their first home. Mm-hmm. I think that's exciting. I've been very successful with real estate. Uh, the wife and I both have been successful in in the short term that we've had, mm-hmm. we've invested very, very well. Um, you yeah, know, like our house Even rate. in a good market, you guys are still doing well. Really cool. Yeah, so we bought our house in November 
of last year. So that would be, I've been doing real estate one full year. Okay. One you know, full I'll year. Finally try it on myself. Finally do it. Yeah, and I was qualified to buy a truck. Uh, Did you I, have any credit? Yeah, okay. I, I had really good credit. So as soon as I got told no from that first house, yeah. I was like, what do I need to do to build credit? I right, need two to three credit cards, yeah. keep that credit card balance right around 30%, blah, 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 pay everything off, blah. Yeah. I did it, and it just freaking rose. Yeah, just rose. Went from zero to like yeah. I mean, if honestly, if you just listen, people do their jobs and are successful at their jobs because they know what they do. Yeah. So if you need help with something and somebody tells you what to do, do it, yeah. and you will be successful. They are giving you the answers to the test, and they've been through it, so they can give yeah. you very sound, solid yep. advice. And, and I feel like I, because of where I came from, and by no means like. <sighs> I call it like the the male white privilege problems, but I just think that's crap. I do too, but you know, you know how it is. You get get that label. Like, trust me. Like, I never wanted out food. Like, like as as bad as my story is, like if I'd have gone up to the head coach and gone, dude, I haven't eaten in a day. He'd have taken me out to pizza. Yeah. If I'd have called my parents and asked for help, they would have helped me. I just was too stubborn to let people help. Yeah. Help me because I wanted to do it on my own, and and I thought it was going to be a good learning (laughs) curve. It was just a lot of hungry (laughs) days. But um, through all of that, I, I really feel like I can relate to people when they're like, yeah, you know, we want to buy a house, but our credit's not that great. And I'm like, I was there. That's a certain skill that I was think there. you have that a lot of agents don't, because you can relate to that first time home buyer. And that's what, has that been a large majority of? Yeah, it was, it was my first year. First year was a lot of first time. Now I'm getting into the, hey, we're looking for our forever home. We're looking for something with Anchorage. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know if it's rolling up in a good looking truck or whatever. People trust you if you trust yourself, I think. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's like you. nobody knows you, you're 25. Yeah. Nobody knows I'm 25. We don't carry ourselves like the quote unquote prototypical 25 year olds. Yeah. We don't. Let's go out to the bars, man. Yeah. Past that. Yeah. My, those days are long. No, I'm going to go hide an RE21 this weekend. Yeah. 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 I'm writing up offers at 9.30 and people are like, are you coming? And I'm like, yeah. I can't I pass this, this up, offer. guys. So once we get this offer, maybe we'll buy a bar. Yeah. Together. Um, but no, so yeah, bought our house in November, totally gut job. Took the and that's what really started the construction company. Okay, so is that I, so that I was going to be your first entrepreneur venture outside yeah. of selling real estate yep. because real estate you're self employed, but it's titled. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I, I, I've grown up doing this. I've grown up swinging a hammer. Dad and I have done a ton of stuff. I know how to do all of it. Yeah. And I'm not afraid of hard work. And so totally got the place, get it down to the bare bones. And my wife, my now wife at the time was girlfriend actually. And then soon to be, I knew I was going to propose. So it wasn't yeah. like, if you're dating from, somebody from and they're just one. girlfriends, don't buy a house in them yet. <laughs> but if they're like fiance, it's a pretty safe bet. Hopefully. Hope everything's going good for your relationships out there. Call in. We'll help you out. Um, both successful. We need to do like a call-in show one of these times. Oh, dude. Absolutely. Great. We need to get some traction. Okay. And then we'll get a call-in. Call I would. Show I want... Because I'd love to hear some like shitty-ass stories. Oh. Like. <laughs> I call it... Okay. So. Hustling, 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 hustling.